there is something special about Petticoat. For me, it was a gentle foreshadowing of pleasant things to come. The rhythmic patterning of unseasonal rains against the carriage window formed myriad apophilic shapes on the glass, largely paradolic in music. The train touched along its fixed serpentine track across the valley of mountains. A kid, surprisingly bored by the breathtaking panorama outside, became more indulgent, much to her parents' occasion, in running with the stuffed monkey which was held close to her chest. The uninhibited love showed by the angel didn't fail to boost life into the inanimate object as they danced together in pure compassion. The highly addictive charm and effervescent smile of a child was always an elixir to me as I sat and relished the beauty of nature both inside and outside the day. The innocence and naivety that they projected was a retrospective reminder of days gone by, a bittersweet nostalgia of what has been and what would have been. I remember my childhood days in the pictures village of Nita in southwestern Karnataka, right in the heart of the migration class. Being born into an orthodox, ultra conservative Tamil family was not easy. I was named Dhru, the brightest star, albeit most of my life was completely entered in perpetual eclipse. Being a priest's son, I was forced to get up at the break of dawn during the cold, harsh winter mornings and take a shower from the icy water. I had to run to the village well, shivering, and get five buckets of water to the temple without spilling while climbing the steep stone steps barefoot. I, I had to bake the main idol at the Sanctum Santorum in the temple. I didn't consider myself to be a king, but the broken waist, the chubby cheeks, a more than pronounced symptom of gynecomastia, and a single elongated tuft of hair tied in a knot on a tonsural head in the delicate wet, pastoral and dhoti never failed to embarrass me and make me a target of original appearable with a terrible day. It was a scene directly taken from Shatsamsha in the sans Zena's sensuousness and confidence among other things. She had Shashikapur ogling at her and I had my ravenous fear stagging me. I was always high from the smoke of the various havans being performed at the temple and the ever-present Christmas period. I hated every bit of my routine Milford House lifestyle. You had to get up on your right side, eat, write, and start any other work with your right hand, and you have to consciously enter any threshold with your right leg, be it a temple or a toilet, which was highly unnatural and utterly difficult for someone who was born in South Pole, which in itself was considered equivalent to breaking all the commandments. The working of my family was a running manual for a wannabe OCD patient. The final brandishing was a sacred threat hung across my shoulder, which confirmed my lifelong membership to the elite White Cross Society. It was an engineering marvel, a scratching device for my back, though it was a reason for leaps in the first place, and a secure key for my atlas cycle. It made its presence felt as it never failed to slide out of my half sleeves at the most inopportune moments, especially in the front of the physical trainer who had a personal vendetta against all diamonds, and I was a scapegoat who had to endure his caste based racial skirts for parading my dream. The only quantum of solace that I could find was in the temple. Everyone was one as devotees, be it rich or poor, healthy or young or, man, young or old, man or woman. Though everyone was selfish in their prayers, they were a collective proof of humility and acceptance that there was a greater power, a mighty force which aligned us all. I saw God in those few eyes with their soul completely surrendered, and I served Him by serving them. By doing so, I also earned an iota of respect and reverence. This was my purpose. Then everything changed. Thank you. This novel speaks about five people who are tricked into a clinical trial, but their lives are actually live streamed into the deep well, where the lives are monitored 24 hours. So all the five people are have had suicidal ideations and they are struggling with their own self. So their life, without their knowledge, is live streamed for others to break down that life. So this is the story of how they come up. How they beat the odds and survive and come out of it. So the uh, USP of this novel is that each chapter is complete in and by itself. So it's a complete story by itself. But if you read from one page to the last page, it reads as a novel. But if you pick a separate chapter, it acts as a short story anthology. So uh, I would suggest if you are dealing with any trouble in your life or you have any friends, please do reach out. There are 
people who support and help each other there are ways to express yourself there's always a shoulder for you to share your thoughts if you are, if you or your friend are suffering please reach out there is always help and there is always